What's going on guys, Victor here, and today I'm fishing the Indian River with my good buddy, Alec, right there. What up? I've done a couple wade videos in the past, so when we wade fish, primarily we like to target snook, redfish, trout, is what you're generally after. Oh. Look at that view behind me. We got a really good afternoon, we got low tide, we got good conditions, and the thing we're doing differently today is we have live shrimp. Normally we come out here and we use artificial lures, when fish don't want to eat, it's hard to resist a nice, juicy, live shrimp like this bucket full. We got about five, six dozen. Shout out to Adam Malusi who hooked it up. We got these juicy little live shrimp, and the way we're fishing them today, I have these popping corks. So I'll explain a little bit more when we're out on the water with these little mustad hooks. Since we're gonna be waiting, we got these ropes, and we got this little bucket. Alec has one and I have one. We'll each take about three, four dozen shrimp, put them in our bucket, attach the bucket to us, and these buckets have little holes, so that way they don't need an air, an air box or an air filter like this right here. This bubble box produces oxygen because shrimp will die real fast if they don't have oxygen. So these little holes, they got constant um, aeration from the natural water itself. Fill me up. And I'm just gonna dump my shrimp into yeah. that bucket. We're gonna give the main batch of shrimp some fresh water. Okay, so we'll leave the mothership of shrimp right there. Look at these. This is gold to any fisherman. Live shrimp are candy to a fish. This is like a snicker bar to them. Everything in salt water eats shrimp. From swordfish to puffer fish, small, big, everything in between, everything eats a shrimp. And this is how we're gonna hook them. Right here in the top of the head. Some people like it in the tail, some people like it in the head. I like to hook them in the head just like that. You get your cork out there, and so the nice thing about the cork is it keeps your shrimp kind of on top and you know where it is at all times. And that cork has a little weight in it and beads and it clacks and it creates a commotion in the water, which draws fish to it. So every once in a while, I'll kind of clack it like that and bring it towards me. All right, boys and girls, we're on the bubble. That's a trout. No, it's a jack. Is it? Yeah, pretty sure. No, it came up like a trout, dude. Are you sure? Yeah, it's a big trout. Is it? I, ca I could have sworn I saw a yellow tail. Alex thinks it's a, a trout. I think it's a jack. Look at how fast it's running now. Damn. I think it's a little jack. <laughs> it's jack. Jack tail beats all day. Oh, maybe it is a pompano. It's a pompano. It's a big pompano. Oh. No way. Look at that thing. Big old pompano on. They get huge here. Look at this thing. Where you at? Where you at? Look at that thing! It's a stud! It's like a little mini permit. Look at it. Beast Pompano. Well, we got dinner. I was not expecting that whatsoever. On that little mustad hook with that shrimp. That bobber went under super fast. When you're wade fishing, you don't have a cooler with you, obviously. So, the same line that I got for my shrimp I'm going to use them as a, uh, a way to hook my pompano up. What we're going to do is, I'm going to rip his gills a little bit, not only to bleed him, but also to dispatch him because I do not want a live pompano attached to me. This is a very sharky area, and uh, that would not be good to have a big bull shark come, especially as the sun's going down. Into the mouth, out the gills. Now he's all bleeding out. Alex Bobber is under. Trout ski, trout ski. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a good one. You want me to grab him? You want it to be yeah, 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 for sure. It's a good eater. Yeah, there's a bunch of trout there. Bro. Heck Barely yeah, good job, dude. Look at that. Barely hooked. This is primarily what we're out here after is these sea trout. That pompano was a complete surprise and check that out. There we go. 
That's a jack. So this is another really common species in the Indian River, a little Jack Crevel. These things are probably one of the most abundant things in the Indian River. Very hard little fighters. See ya. Lizard fish. Lizard fish. Alex says you gotta lip them. He wants me to put my fingers in this little crazy mouth right there. It's just bristles. It's like a bass. You on? Yeah. That's not a that's not a bad fish. That's a real fish. It feels like a big trout, dude. Yeah? Yeah. Alright, I'll put my hook up. It's not a jack, it's not doing the jack dance. Trout roll, yes. Oh, is that a red? It looks like it, doesn't it? It is a red, dude. Heck yeah. Little red fish. Dude, look at that. I haven't caught one in so long. Caitlin's gonna be so jealous. My girlfriend said she wanted to catch a red, and well, here's the red. Well, Caitlin, if you're watching, you Alec got your red. Well, that made it worth the trip right there. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna cast again if there's I one. I think there's more there, dude. All right, go ahead, let him go. All right, nice little red. There he goes. Worth the trip right there, even though it was eight inches long. Well, that's all she wrote. I We can't handle the bugs anymore. They are really bad. We're out. We are out like trout. Take a look at that. That's the sunset. Absolutely beautiful day out here. And you know what? Wade fishing can be slow, but got myself some dinner, got a pompano, and thank you to Alec. Got myself a trout, and you gotta just stay positive, and that's it. And <laughs> I'm thinking of actually eating those shrimp. They look good. They don't smell, they're still alive, so I think I'm gonna clean them up and do some type of uh, shrimp and fish recipe. So I'll see you guys well, there. I uh, currently have one of the shrimp horns stuck in my pinky. They have, what I was trying to say is a lot of times, kids especially will say, oh dad, the shrimp bit me or something. They don't bite. What they do is they have these horns right here at the tip of them, and these things are really sharp. And when you try to grab a shrimp, they jump around in the bucket. And this thing, I've never in my life had it break off in my finger. I've been pricked many times. That horn has backwards facing spines, so when it breaks off in you, it's impossible to, to uh, pull out. Brick busted out the tweezers and it's stuck in there. It will not come out, so I have to do a little surgery later on. These shrimp look great. Um, they did not smell. They didn't have a really bad water when we got them. So all you gotta do to clean them is rip off the head, just like so. And I'm not gonna take all the tails off, but just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna take the tail off, okay? And the legs come off when you take the tail off. And you saw how big that shrimp was? That's why they're called shrimp, because look at how small that tail has now become. And the last thing you can do is, there's a, uh, I get, it's called deveining them. There's an intestinal tract that runs along the center of the shrimp you can take a knife and you can pull that out, but we're not babies. It doesn't bother us. They're so small, you don't taste it. If you've ever eaten clams or oysters, you're eating all the guts when you eat a clam or oyster too, so that's all I'm going to say about that. Tip of our knife going along length of the fish in contact with the spine all the way down to the tail. And these fish are really pretty. Look at those spots. Okay, now we go from the tail, back up towards the head, making sure our knife is in contact with bones. Break through the pin bones, other side of the backbone, point the tip of your knife down. And I'll show you something real interesting right there. And then over this rib cage, There's our filet. I think the coolest thing about trout, I think the first time I ever did a catch and cook with one, I had broken to the stomach. Cause you guys know that during the filet portions of these videos, we always like to look in there. And I was like, what the heck is this thing? So you guys actually commented below and told me that it's the fish's air bladder, swim bladder. And it's like 
a fish that I've never seen before. It looks like Laffy Taffy, like the candy you would get in a store. It's super stretchy and very odd looking. Now you don't see it in a lot of fish, but you see it in trout. From the tail, working up towards the head. And I always trail with my left hand as we move up. You can eat them with the skin on, but I'm taking the skin off for today's recipe. And just like that. That is a really cool looking skin. Very unique. You know, you don't see a lot of fish in the ocean with a print like this. Worms. Is there worms? Yep. Where? Right there. Is it? Oh, there is worms. So yeah, this is a, a really common thing. Trout, all drum. Sea trout are not actually trout. They're part of the drum family. So red drum, black drum, big amberjacks. Frankly, any big fish that's been living a long time has a really good chance of getting worms, and it's generally in the tail section. Not harmful, spaghetti worms. And um, I never even really cut them out unless they look really bad. Very good looking fillets, minimal bloodline, minimal bones. Very good looking fish. People say that trout are mushy, but I highly disagree with that. The fish itself, when you catch them are mushy, but the fillets are anything but mushy. Tonight's recipe, two different things. We're cooking on the wok, we're cooking on the grill, and we're also making homemade pesto, which I've never done before. Rookie's done before. So what I'm gonna do is, I have some pine nuts, and holy moly are these things expensive. I had never known. This is like eight bucks in pine nuts. They're like the world's most expensive nut. So I'm just gonna add them all in there. This is probably like four, say like four or five cloves of garlic. Bunch of basil. I still don't think it's enough basil. Brooke thinks it's plenty, but she didn't want to kill all her basil plants. So here we go. One... I gave you as much as I could with keeping the plant alive. <laughs> you have no idea. She's going to become the world's best plant mom. Our entire house is basically full of plants right now. No, She's... it's not. It's getting there. We got one half of the house. I love it though. Just a little bit of plants. I think, I think plants add a good ambiance and warm up a house, but she's doing good. She's uh, becoming a good plant mom, getting ready for the real thing. We're gonna add olive oil until we get the consistency we want. So I'm gonna add it through the top right here. We have some Parmesan cheese we're gonna put in there. I'm just gonna do a little bit of lemon juice. Since we're putting our fish directly on the grill, I'm gonna bathe them in some olive oil, spread it around. Olive oil on the fish, now some garlic powder, some paprika, salt, black pepper, and the same thing on the other side, and I'll see you guys out at the grill. Woo! We are smoking. Okay, going straight on the grill grates today. First with the pompano. So the fish is on the grill. Now next thing is making the sauce for the shrimp. Sweet red chili. I'm doing the whole bottle because there's a lot of shrimp. We actually I bought some store-bought shrimp because you guys will see the size difference. It, it's literally like the bait shrimp are an eighth of the size of the store-bought shrimp. Some soy, rice vinegar, sesame oil, now cornstarch and cold water. I already flipped them. Look at those beautiful sear marks. Sunflower oil into our wok. Red chili. Some ginger. And garlic. Now 
Okay, we're gonna hit it with a little bit more oil because we're about to add our shrimp. This is one of the biggest bait shrimp. That's the size comparison. Now we add our shrimp. Okay, this is the sauce we made inside. We're gonna pour it in. Our special. Okay, we're gonna finish off our shrimp with some fresh cilantro and green onions, scallions. Those are from my garden. They are. Here's our beautiful, that's the trout. Slides right off, doesn't stick at all. Here's one half of the pompano, another half, pompano, pompano. Oh. You like shrimp, right? Yeah, so something else. Um, the fish was really, really good. Like grilled on the fish and that smoky flavor and everything was so good. I think that was my favorite grilled fish that we've done so far on this grill. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, it was really, I was surprised. And I left it on there forever too. I think I had a piece of trout, not the pompano. And it was really, really good. Squash was good. And then Candace brought some king crabs for us and we cleaned those up too. They were really, really good. So big shout out to her for bringing those over and everything was really good. I really liked the shrimp. The sauce on it was was amazing. I didn't care about the squash too much, but I'm not a big squash guy, but I I loved everything else. I'm not a big squash guy, but that was the best squash <laughs> I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was the best squash I ever had. But everything was delicious, everything. Candace doesn't have to say anything because she's the one who brought the king crab legs, which seriously, that was awesome. That was like the best dessert. Fresh fish on the grill, fresh shrimp in the wok, and then we had king crab for dessert. It doesn't get better than that. Well, as I was finishing this video and editing it up for you guys, I completely forgot to touch upon the biggest like theme of the video, which was the fact of eating bait shrimp, which I've never done before and none of us talked about it. And that's because they honestly didn't taste any different than the store-bought shrimp, which were jumbo shrimp from Publix that were frozen. If anything, I thought the bait shrimp were a little bit more tender, even though they were teeny weeny shrimp. Like seriously, the size comparison didn't compare at all. But um, hey, if you have some live shrimp left over from your fishing trip, you paid for them, you might as well try and eat them. There was nothing wrong with them. I don't treat them like fish though. Shrimp is not something you should leave on ice, you should Clean those things and get them in a refrigerator ASAP. They, do, they don't fare as well over a long period of time on ice, I've noticed. They just start to get bad tasting. But Brookie and I are about to do a spear fishing for sheep's head video, I'm pretty sure, tomorrow. Gonna get on the kayaks, very excited to do that. Finishing up this video, we'll have this video up on Wednesday, and I'll see you guys, I think by Saturday we'll have another video up. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for liking, for subscribing, and I'll see you guys in that next video.